Pretty clueless, actually. Uh, he's just waiting around. Daddy, we just didn't see the tape. Oh, I came out of the lake almost dropping my birthday tape. <laughs> you saw that, huh? Sweetheart, did you, uh, eat all these candies? Well, I sort of... gonna have a little tummy ache. No, I'm not. A lot of the kids took most of it home when they go to bed. Mm-hmm. So what'd you think? Did you like the... Hawaiian theme or what? Did we overdo it? Mm-mm. I loved it. Nobody has ever had a luau party in their life. Thank you, Daddy. Aloha, aloha, aloha. I can't take all the credit here, sweetheart. It was really Janet's idea. Really? Yeah. She always knows exactly what I like, though. Yeah. I wish she could have come. Well, she would have been here if she didn't have that dentist appointment. She said she'd drop by and give you a present. Well, Daddy? Yeah? Is it still my birthday? Yeah, until it strikes 12. That's it. It's your birthday. Why? No, thanks. I was just thinking about you. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Thanks. How was your party? Great. Thanks for all the decorations. They were awesome. I'm glad you liked them. Did the lady come to teach you how to do the hula? Did you send her? Well, I saw her ad in the paper. I thought it might be fun. She said she was actually from Hawaii, and she even gave me a special crown made of flowers since I was the birthday girl. I bet it looks very pretty on you. Are you finished with your dentist appointment? Uh, yeah. In fact, I, I just got back. Well, do you think you should come over? Now? Yeah. Have your guests left yet? Uh-huh. But we still got lots of cake fest and peanut butter thrill ice cream. So, can you come over? I'll be there before you can say Honolulu. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Come on in. I got here as soon as I could. Where's Amanda? Amanda? Yeah. She's not here. Oh, uh, she's not, huh? No. Well, that's strange because she called me and told me to come over. She did? When? Why, just a little while ago. Didn't she tell you? Not a word, right, guys? No. Surprise! Oh! No. Hey, there she is! Yeah. You look great. What's going on? I'm having another birthday party since you couldn't make the first one. Hold still. Don't move. Look out, hot soup. Oh, what are you doing? Well, you came up with this Hawaiian luau motif, so you got to dress the part. <laughs> yeah, hey, we saved you a big piece of cake over here, too. And it's double food cake with pink frosting. Trevor, you It's eat. Amanda's idea. Right? Yep. You look so pretty. Here, I brought something for you. Can I bring Daddy? Of course you can. It's your birthday. Ooh, a charm Whoa. bracelet. Whoa. You I like it? I should have one. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. You want me to help you put it on? Here we go. Clasp is kind of hard to you get. You expect me to put that on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Wow. They're going to hear you coming a mile away, aren't they? Thank you. You're welcome. Tim, where's your quilt? Again. <laughs> I want to teach you how to do the hula. Oh, okay, I'm game. <laughs> you know, you'd just have like ten parties if it were up to you, wouldn't you? No. This one's special. Just for family. <laughs> Not like that, like you do your food. What, like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
better jump out of my skin if I don't hear something soon. Is she going to do it real fast? Listen, is there, is there anybody that you can call? No, Jack said he would call as soon as he heard something. Daddy, come do the hole with us. Oh, man, my fingers are really tired. Can we take a break, please? Mm, okay, okay. Can I try it? Oh, well, yeah, come here. I'll show you how to do it. I know how to do it. You sure? Listen, I gotta give Brad a call, so I'm gonna use my car phone so I don't tie yours up. Yeah, okay, man. Want me to play? Yeah. Boy, you're really getting the hang of that hula. <laughs> hey, well, I had a great teacher. Yeah. She looks so beautiful. I can't believe she's six years old. Yeah, she's a trip. And the party was great, thanks to you. I'm glad. I can't tell you how much it means to me to be considered part of the family. Well, it was Amanda's idea. You didn't say anything. I mean, you didn't have to go along with it. It's her birthday. Yeah, but did she... Well, she's crazy to see you. So you really don't mind me being here? No, of course not. Why? Well, you just seem like you're bothered about something, but... I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to pry. Uh, Jan, what's... Bothering me isn't isn't you. You don't have to tell me. Well, maybe I should in case I need some help. Breaking some bad news to Amanda. Why? What happened? Haley's missing. She was supposed to go down to the shore. We think she's in trouble. Hang. Yeah, Dylan here. Yeah, Jack. What's the word on Haley? His mind. I always had a strange feeling about him. Yeah, how so? Sky was afraid of him. She never would tell me why. Well, he's lucky he croaked. If I got my hands on him, I'd rip his head off and right. stuff it down his throat. Daddy? Yeah? Hey, sweetheart, how about some, uh, real food, huh? Macaroni and cheese, maybe? Why do you all look so serious? Uh, we were just talking. About what? Um... Grown-up stuff. Uh, we, hey, what, what do you say we play that, uh, that computer game that Carrie bought you, huh? Okay, but would you play it with me? Sure. Where is it? Oh, okay. Excuse us. Excuse us. Ooh, here we go. just got to make it. I mean, Trevor can't stand another loss. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. But in the way he internalizes everything. You know him pretty well. I don't know about that, but I know he holds his pain inside. Tries to hide it, so no one can tell how much he's hurting. That just makes things worse. Yeah. Well, you're the first one to get him open, open up about Laurel. Just, he can't go through it again. But if it happens, I'll be there for him. If he lets me. Oh, yeah, you nailed them. <laughs> Time for me to get out of here. I gotta go meet Brad at McKay's. Hey, I hope you had a good birthday. Give me a hug. Oh. <laughs> Tell Uncle Brad I'm sorry he couldn't come and give him a hug and a kiss. I will. He's sorry he couldn't make it, too. But you know what? He said maybe one night all three of us will get together and go out. All right. Make up for it. Okay. Great, great. Thanks yeah. again for the cool outfit. All right, you model it for me next time, okay? Okay. Bye. Hey, you give me a call as soon as you hear anything, all right? Yeah, I will. Thanks for all your help with the place. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right. Good night. Good. Daddy. Yeah. Can I give Harold give my my cake? Harold, uh, I don't think birthday cake is good for doggies. Please, Daddy, just a teensy-weensy, please. Well, since it's your birthday, okay. But just a teensy-weensy piece, as long as you do it outdoors, okay? Okay. If you want to talk, now's a good time. I just... I just keep thinking about how far Tinkerbell has come since she came here to Pine Valley. You know, heavy metal punk rocker, pain in the tush... No matter what she did, I can never stay mad at her. Boy, she pulled some doozies. 
Haley's a survivor, Trevor. If I can make it, so can she. Bravo! And for my next number. Whoa, 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 hold on here. Three on course is enough. Get the hook. Ham bone is Amanda's is going to bed. Oh, come on, Daddy. It's my birthday. I don't have a bedtime, remember? Says who? She's right. Birthday bylaws. Section 3, paragraph 1. Birthday boys and girls don't have to go to bed at their regular time. Not until the next day. Do you have a copy of these bylaws? Mm-mm. Why is it so cynical? They're also negotiable. Now, you put some presents away, I'll let you stay up, uh, an extra hour. I think it's a pretty good deal. Oh. Shake? Sure. Say uncle. 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 I'll never play the ukulele again. Right. Score one for music lovers everywhere. Oh, there's a comedian in the house. I can see. Scoot. Scoot, sweetheart. Oh, I forgot to thank you for my party time. Oh, you don't have to thank me, sweetie. You told her? No, no, I didn't say zip. I knew it was from you, just like I knew you wouldn't miss my birthday party. How'd you know? <laughs> que pasa? Amanda said when she blew out her birthday candles... She wished for a visit from me. She's got a heart of platinum. Hope I don't have to break it. Trevor, call the hospital. Maybe Haley's improved. Jack said he'd keep me posted. At least she put up a good front with Amanda. Mr. Smiley Face, you know the bylaws. Yeah. Can't rain on the birthday girl's parade. No. There are birthdays you can always remember, and there are birthdays you, you can never forget. And Amanda's too young to learn those lessons now. There's some lessons that no one should have to learn. Not Amanda, not Haley, not you. What if Haley doesn't make it? Yeah, uh, uh, tell her I love her. Tell her I'll see her really soon. Yeah, thanks. Haley's going to make it. She's going to make it. She's going to be all right. Great. Woo! Sorry, I, I got a little carried away. It's okay. It's late. I, I should probably get going anyway. I've got to go to work tomorrow. Thanks for including me tonight. Hey, hey, Amanda. Uh, loved the party, the present, the party dress, the Hawaiian hullabaloo. So did I. Uh... You did what you want to do. You gave a little girl a piece of heaven on earth, so thank you. It was my pleasure. Give her a kiss goodnight for me. Wish her sweet dreams. That's it? That's everything. Yeah, you're right. That is everything. Good night. Yep. Is it okay if I come down now? How long were you standing up there? <laughs> you look like a little Annie Oakley. And the first rule of the range is whenever you come into a room and somebody's there, you got to make a little noise, a little cough or something so people know you're there. Understand? Mm, but I wasn't in the room. <clears throat> Another counselor in the family. Hey, hey there, gypsy boots. Spy on you and China, Daddy. Who's talking about spying? I I just want to know if you heard or saw anything that might have confused you. You used to hate Janet, right? What, are we getting into ancient history here? Come on, Daddy. Just answer the question. Yes or no? Yes. You hated her? Yes. And now you like her? People change. Yeah, I... I like her. And people who like each other hug each other? Yeah. You see, technically it wasn't that kind of a hug. 
I had just gotten some news that I was very excited about, so so excited I could burst. It, remember that time you gave me that choke hole when you found out we were going down south for a vacation? Remember that? It was that kind of a hug? I could have hugged anybody, uh, Tim or Uncle Mike or Harold, the dog. But it wasn't just anyone you hugged. It was my mommy and you're my daddy. So? So? So is that moving you with us? Listen, um, I'm not much of a drinker. What goes well with a topsy-turvy day, red or white? Uh, I recommend a Merlot. That sounds fine. Oh, excuse me, I, I didn't order this. Compliments of the gentleman sitting over there. Shared the same roof like Jamie's mom and dad. They're divorced. Yeah, that's right. Are you and Janet divorced? <sighs> Not exactly. What exactly? Well, we never uh, got married in the first place. How come? <sighs> because I didn't feel that way about Janet. But you like her now. Any. Woman who gave birth to you, sweetheart, I, is a doll in my book. If she wasn't my mom, would you still like her? Say what? You heard me. If Janet wasn't my birth mother, would you invite her to the mall or let her come over or give her a big fat bear hug? What is this, the third degree? Am I a hostile witness? Ooh, saved by the bell. Going. Yeah. Uh, hang on one second, okay? Yeah. Why don't you go brush your teeth, okay? All right. We're not finished talking about Janet yet. Hey, since... No, no, you've been called much worse. Have you ever considered uh, being a professional diplomat? No, Janet, I wasn't trying to insult you. You just come by it naturally. No, no. Don't misunderstand me. Actually, I admire you. For what? Well, you, uh... You used to roll over and play dead. Whatever life throws at you, you rise to it. You, uh, you don't care what people think. You don't know me that well. I don't blame life for my troubles. I've done some horrible things, and I've paid for them very dearly. I wore my reputation as outcast, not so fairly and not so squarely. What have you done? I kidnapped Gloria Marsh. Did you bring her back? Country way. Amateur. <laughs> oh, oh, I nearly ran Erica down in my car by accident. Will Cortland, need I say more? <sighs> I cheated on Erica. Yeah, Palmer Cortland at the Chicken Shack. Mm, I dealt a bad business deal to a friend. I hired a Will wannabe to gaslight Dixie. Your deal. I'm all played out. Why would you want to be a member of any club I'm in? I've played by the book all my life, and what did it get me? Well, a glass of flat champagne and a ringside seat next to an ex-planeteer. That is right. Good boys are boring. For the first time in my life, I am going to have some fun. you got a funny idea. Fun. Don't you kind of miss your old life? What, that old uh, straight jacket existence? This Merrick has a new motto. No looking back. No regrets. <laughs> no, 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 you look lovely. Well, you shouldn't stay. We outcasts are very sensitive. Well, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I don't know. It just, this seems inevitable. Life's full of surprises.
you like compliments? Describe one to me. All right. When's the last time someone has told you that you're an attractive woman? Who's that? Oh, my fairy godmother. But here she is, alive and working overtime. Doing what? Come on. Don't you find this combo a little otherworldly? I mean, not that it isn't pleasant. Pod Lord of the Manor talking to lowly Janet Green. <laughs> oh, the Lord of the Manor. Yes, yes, that is I. Janet, why not? I mean, we've got some very decent champagne here. May I, may I offer you some more? Thanks. Are you hungry? I could have them bring us a menu. No, it's okay. I mean, not that I wouldn't enjoy dining with you. It's just, it's a little late for me. Oh, come on now. The evening is young. We could, uh, we could drive to Center City. Better yet, drive to New York, do the club scene. Oh, Dimitri, <laughs> this isn't you. What? Come on, you're quaffing champagne and morphing into party guy. <sighs> fun is fun. And work is something else. Now, what does that mean? Means you're going at this new you with a vengeance. Trevor. Trevor. Oh, hey, Eric. Thank you for meeting me here. I just can't seem to make any appointments during business hours. Hey, you want what? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So what can I do you for? Trevor, I want to make absolutely sure that this is handled correctly and, and discreetly. Although heaven knows everybody in the world already seems to know about it. Sweetheart, whatever you say stays with me. I've never been able to tolerate more than two glasses. Janet, Janet, no good. That is no good. Well, it is a great vintage. So you're cutting loose, huh? Raising heck and pushing the party envelope. Well, I guess it's no surprise after the shredder your life's been through lately. No, 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 no. Therapy sessions are not my idea of fun. What the warlord of Wild Wind needs is to lighten up and have a good time. Maybe every night for the next month, maybe for the next year, maybe forever. Well, that ought to take the edge off. Yeah, and if I can't prevail upon my uh, employees to join me... Oh, but they should. Champagne's great. Look, if I promise not to wear a lampshade or do the Macarena, would you stick around for a little while? Kind of partial to lampshades, actually. Mm -hmm. Besides, there's not many places to run off to in this town. No, no, no. It uh, sort of gets low voltage after Sunday. Talk about the odd couple. Dimitri and Janet, but they're not a couple. Well, after Dimitri's onset of insanity, nearly running Sonia and me down in the park, stalking us all the way to New York, and then stealing WRCW right out from under Stewart, I mean, nothing he does but surprise wait, 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 me. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What did you say about Dimitri and WRCW? Dimitri broke it alone for Stewart, talked him into putting WRCW up as collateral, and then he called in the loan. Why? Why? Yet another pathetic attempt to control my life. Well, I will not be intimidated by that man, no matter how many gold loops he puts on his uniform. Thank you. Say what? Old world charm. Won't cut it in the TV biz. Well, he's not going to try to run the station, is he? Well, it's comic, isn't it? I think he's in way over his head. Well, I feel sorry for the guy. Sorry for him? Are you mad? Trevor, he's lost it. Look at him sitting there drooling over Pine Valley's most infamous outcast. Wait, wait. Wait a second. It wasn't so long ago you you let her bunk in your uh, in your house. You bailed her out of jail. You, you defended Janet all over town. Even I have temporary lapses of judgment. <laughs> you two got along like a house of fire. Well, I'd say a friend is someone who would tell you that your husband is cheating on you with your sister-in-law. Not always. Not a friend that didn't want to hurt you. Or some totally immoral user who was only looking out for her own good. Now you just think about that, Trevor. Birds of a feather. Anyhow, I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk to you about Sonia's adoption. Wait, wait, wait a second. You, you, you got a big hate going here for Dimitri and you're tarring Janet with the same brush. I mean, yeah, she's made some mistakes. 
doozies. Murder, kidnapping. Yeah, but not so long ago you would have given her a second chance. Over your very loud protests in case you've forgotten. Trevor, what's gotten into you? Why are you defending Janet Crane? Thank you so much. Winner of the Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Writing Team. Tune in sometime and see how it's done. Congratulations. Delightful change in my dreary routine. Ah, oh, the man is smooth. I mean it. Thank you. I mean, I guess I'm just feeling a little funny with all this gallant treatment. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, anytime I can be of service, my pleasure. You know, I, I did feel a little awkward walking out of the bar together. I mean, Erica must have seen us. I, I guess that was the point, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't care what Erica saw or didn't see. Now, you two used to be good friends. What happened? Well, she found out that I knew about you, Maria. And that I didn't tell her. And I encouraged Skye not to tell her. And so, bye-bye, friend Erica. Why did you keep silent? I didn't want her to be hurt. I guess I'm trying to make up for all the pain I've caused so many people. Maybe you're just being a decent human being. It's a nice thing for you to say. I just wish your secret could have stayed secret. I think everybody would have been better off. Anyway, thanks for the drink and the chat. Good night. Dimitri. You're a very decent human being yourself. For what it's worth, you and Erica should still be together. You belong to each other. You always will. Well, thanks, anyway. <laughs> I guess I had a little too much coffee this morning. Working hard? Oh, the books are in pretty good shape. Just a matter of plugging in a few numbers. I'm trying to keep an eye on things until Haley and Mateo get back. That's nice. I bet they appreciate that. So, what brings you here? Coffee. I really did the Costa Rican blend. <laughs> Me too. So... So, how's it going? Fine. How's Amanda this morning? Oh, she's good. She's in school, you know. Good. What, but that really helps after last night? Excuse me? The coffee really brings you around. Around from what? Well, unless you took something before you went to sleep. That is, if you got any sleep. Trevor, is there something you want to say? Oh, come on. I, I saw you putting away the drinks last night. I think I can handle two glasses of champagne. And you think you can handle Dimitri Merrick, can't you? There's nothing to think about. The guy's in the rebound. You watch it, you're going to get hurt. I don't know what makes you think Dimitri's in any position to hurt me. The guy is running amok. Well, you don't have to worry about me and Dimitri. You have come too far to backslide now. You think I need you to tell me that? Just watch yourself. You remember what happened after Pierce comes to you? You practically came on loop. Merrick is on the rebound here. He's not exactly looking for the forever after. Then who says I am? <sighs> so that's it, huh? Well, now you're in a one-night stand? So is that really what you think of me? I saw you go up to his room last night. No, you saw me go up to my room last night, which happens to be across the hall from Dimitri's. Not that it's any of your business. You're Amanda's mother. That makes it my business. So that means you can monitor my comings and goings? Dimitri's bad news, Janet. Listen to what I'm saying. Why? You seem to have already made up your mind on some desperate woman looking for a one-night stand. What's it to you, Trevor? Yak and they fall for all I care. Just don't let a man to get hurt by the fallout. I never would. Good. We understand each other. Well, Trevor, what a 
shining example of interpersonal communications that was. Oh, yeah, we used to have seen the interpersonal communication I saw between Dimitri Merrick and Janet Green over at the Valley Inn bar last night. Janet and Dimitri? Yeah, what am I going to tell Amanda about that, huh? Janet's a grown woman, Trevor, and quite an attractive woman. She's a mother. She should behave accordingly. I think she does. <laughs> Making time with Count Reculus? So why are you taking this so hard, anyway? She's the mother of my daughter. I care about my kid. Oh, you know what I think? I think Janet Green has gotten under that thick skin of yours, Trevor, is what I think. And I also think that you should know it's okay to care for her. I don't. You don't. I do. Oh. I'm kind of a man. <laughs> so why are you so upset? Why are you busting my chops? I don't need this. I'm out of here. I shouldn't have so much coffee.